Hi, I'm Denshi, and in today's video, that's right, I'm talking about web browsers, even though I've never actually touched that topic on this channel before. Weirdly enough, though, because this channel is all about privacy, security, all this stuff, and web browsers are one of the biggest liabilities when it comes to that. Now, I'm just telling you, if you're out here using Firefox, Google Chrome, whatever, let me just open up default Firefox, just show you what, what state this browser is in, right? You open it up, and look at what you get. You get blasted with corporate art. You get blasted with crap. Look, look, you get, you know, this corporate art with this lady on a skateboard and this frog like who wants these frogs nobody wants these frogs and in fact when you're done setting it up it's even worse done setting up look at this you're surrounded by amazon ads youtube wikipedia reddit reddit that's that just 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 because they put reddit on the front page you should just dis dismiss this browser immediately right the same thing goes for google chrome of course but obviously more importantly these browsers track you that's just a fact they send information back to whether it's google or mozilla or whatever and you know just between you and me both of these companies are basically in cahoots, you know, Google sends a bunch of money to Firefox to make um, Google this, the default search engine over here, like this Google button over here probably cost them like millions of dollars, right? Uh, or even billions. And that money, you know, it kind of gives Firefox incentive to not really compete that much. And it's not, it's not a nice landscape, the modern browser landscape. However, we can fix it. We can fix this. Uh, and I'll show you how. I'm going to show you the three browsers you can use that have no tracking, that respect your privacy, have lots of security features, and are actually usable. Like, websites work on them, you can log into all your stuff, and I'm going to show you them today in order of usability. So let's start with the classic, the one that everyone on this channel knows because I always use it in all my videos. It's my favorite one. That's ungoogled Chromium. I'll have all these linked in the description. You can check them out. And if you open ungoogled Chromium by default, as you can see, it's blank. It's Google Chrome with every single little bit of Google stripped out of it, as the name implies, on Google. Another interesting thing you might notice about ungoogled Chromium is if you try to search something in the search bar, so I try, you know, I type in Denshi, it doesn't work. That's because by default, the search bar only accepts domains. So I can type in denshi.org and I'll access my website, but I can't just type in a word like Denshi. Now, I'm gonna tell you, if you go down to settings and go down to search engine and change this to say Bing or Yahoo or let's put DuckDuckGo, probably the least worst option out of those, right? Although not the best. I'll, I might make a video on alternative search engines in the future. But once you've selected DuckDuckGo, you can actually type in over here Denshi or whatever it is you're searching for. Um, and you'll get DuckDuckGo and you'll also get a result of me. Look at me. Check it out. Denshi.org. <laughs> that's great. I didn't know I was on the front page of DuckDuckGo. But anyways, that's how you can get search in this browser, which by default is the same. That's, that's how minimal we're talking here. It's so stripped down, it doesn't even have search by default. Another thing you might want to enable is cookies. So if you go to uh, youtube.com, normal cookies are enabled, but third-party cookies, which are needed to sign in across services, say on like YouTube, Google, all the stuff. See this little eye with the cross in it? The third-party cookies are blocked. Um, and if the site is not working, you can actually enable them. I'll show you how to enable them in the settings as well. You can go to privacy and security, go to cookies and other site data. And if you want to just be safe about it, make sure that every website works. You can click on allow all cookies and all cookies will work. Uh, but what I like to do is like to block all cookies because I'm like that, you know? And then I go down here and I can add ex exceptions to the websites that I want to be allowed cookies. So just to be as, as safe as possible, I'm going to add... Um, the brackets and a star and a dot, which means every subdomain, and then uh, google.com. So the brackets over here, that basically means that www.google.com, docs.google.com, account.google.com, every subdomain of google.com will work. And I'm going to include third-party cookies because, you know, Google requires those to function. And I'm also going to add another service. I'm going to add uh, youtube.com, enabling third-party cookies there. So with these two options, I can now sign in with Google on the browser uh, without having to enable all cookies. Of course, the same functionality would be possible if I just clicked allow all cookies, but that would allow cookies across every website and that's not exactly safe, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, you can also add a do not track request for extra privacy. And uh, yeah, in terms of privacy settings, that's about it. There's a few more security settings you can add, like you can always use secure connections, you might want to enable that. Secure DNS, you can add like a, a you know, encrypted DNS. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. There is one more thing you want to though, which is um, you want to do this, right? Is to get extensions in the browser. This is a bit of a, you got to jump through a few hoops, but it'll work once you get it set up. So if you click on web store over here, it doesn't work. That's because the Chrome web store by default relies on underlying Google code, which is not present in this browser. That's if I go to uh, chrome.google.com uh, into the web store, if I go to the Chrome Web Store, as you can see, I try to click on an extension, like let's say uBlock Origin. 
there's no button to add it. That's because the, the code in the browser to add it is gone because everything Google related, including the web store functionality, has been stripped from this ungoogled browser. So to add that functionality back, you want to get this tool called Chromium Web Store by a developer called Never Decaf. So Never Decaf develops this tool that basically allows you to automatically update and install all the extensions you want. So if I go down here, there's an option for ungoogled Chrome that you have to enable if you want this to work. So you want to copy paste this link, this uh, extensions, extension mine request handling link. So I'm going to copy that link. I'm going to paste it up here. And as you can see this highlighted flag, we want to go to default and always prompt for install. As soon as it downloads an extension as a file, it will automatically try to install it in the browser, which is the functionality we want for the web store to work. So if you click on relaunch over here, as you can see, we're back at it again in the browser, and we can go back to uh, this over here, and as you can see, the button still isn't there because we haven't installed the actual extension. So you go down here to releases, click on Chromium Web Store, and it'll prompt us to install it. So we can click on add extension, and there it is. That's great. So now we can go down to uBlock Origin, down in Chromium Web Store, reload the page. And as you can see, you can now add to Chromium. So we're gonna click on this button, add to Chromium, and there it is. You can add uBlock Origin. There we are. The extension has been installed. It, it's did right over here. That's how you get extensions on this browser. And that's pretty much it for ungoogled Chromium. You can get extensions, you can set up all the different settings for privacy, cookies, all that stuff, the search engine. Yeah, I mean, that's how I personally use it. Although by default, I actually have it set up to load up in dark mode, which is a lot prettier, I, I think. And in fact, my website also has dark mode. Check it out, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for Ungoogle Chrome. But let's look at our second option today, which is LibreWolf. Now there's a video by my friend Vicky the Chills. I'll have the link in the description where he goes a lot more into detail about LibreWolf and its philosophy and stuff like that. But it's basically Firefox fixed up. It's like Firefox with all the privacy features enabled and set up. So I'll show you how to customize those too. If you go to the actual LibreWolf website, LibreWolf.org, I think it is. As you go to this website, you can go to Docs and it actually shows you how to customize the browser uh, on the uh, settings and overrides section. So there's a file called LibreWolf.overrides.config. Now this is where I'm going to get technical, all right? This is where we're going to get a bit technical because we have to open up our terminal. Oh no, scary to do this. Or at least I do because I use a text editor in the terminal. So we want to go to a directory from our home directory, right? So our home directory is tilde uh, forward slash dot LibreWolf, right? And we want to go into this directory and we want to create a file called LibreWolf.overrides.cfg. So we're going to just copy paste this name. Um, and in this file, we can add different settings that customize the functionality of the web browser. So if you scroll down here, there's a few different common ones. One I'm going to enable is letterboxing. So let's say I want to go to Denshi.org, right? By default, the, the website fills up my screen. Now, if you don't know this, a few websites do this very sneaky thing where they automatically track your resolution size. Now, my website doesn't do that, but a lot of websites do that using JavaScript code. Um, and what they do is they basically check your resolution and use that to fingerprint you to check if you come back to a different website. They can use it to track you, basically. To fix this problem, you can enable something called letterboxing. You may have seen this in Tor browser, where the browser by default like boxes off the website. I'm going to show you how to change that over here. So I'm going to copy paste this option. I'm going to put it down here in our LibreWolf config. I'm going to write and quit this and vim. And now if we reload the browser, just close it and uh, open it again. And then we go to a website like denshi.org, for example, as you can see, there we are. We got a, uh, you know, a complete border around the website, which prevents us from being tracked. So, well, from being tracked in resolution wise, at least to some extent. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of other things you can check out in the LibreWolf documentation. I'll leave this all linked in the description so you can check it out and customize anything. So just in case like a website breaks, like, I don't know, Discord, I think doesn't work by default on LibreWolf. You have to like customize a few things in it. Just in case stuff is breaking, just go to, you know, settings and overrides, and you can probably find an option in here that fixes that, right? LibreWolf is a pretty good option Option if you want a browser which um, has a lot of cool features by default, it actually has uBlock Origin installed by default. I didn't have to install this, it just is installed. It's great because you know you want that tracking removed from your browser, so it's great to have that installed just with the browser without having to go through and uh, customize stuff, without having to go through and install the extension, just like I had to do in Uncle Chromium. So LibreWolf has a lot of advantages, but if you want to get in and actually make it usable, you have to go through to this LibreWolf overrides and to customize a few things. So finally, here's the twist to the video, right? This is the part where it gets interesting. The, the browser that's the hardest to configure, but actually has a lot of options and interesting things you can do with it privacy-wise, 
you're never gonna believe this, it's actually Firefox. That's right, Firefox, the one I was just complaining about in the beginning of the video. There's something called Arkenfox. You can check this out, I'll have this linked in the description. But it's basically this uh, user.js customizing file that you can get that automatically removes a bunch of really annoying features in Firefox. So you might be tempted to download this and install it manually. There's actually a script which does it for you. And if you're on ArchX or Arch Linux, uh, this is actually in the AUR. So you can search for it, Arkin Fox, and uh, there it is, Arkin Fox user.js. I have this installed and I'll show you how to do it on the terminal. So closing Firefox for a bit. If you type in Arkin Fox um, updater, it'll automatically find your Firefox profiles. Now you're going to want to select the default one. So the default one over here is eight R Y L, whatever, the one that ends in release basically. And that's always gonna be profile zero pretty much. So you can click on zero and it will select it and set up the Arkin Fox in profile zero. Just type Y over here and there it is. Now it'll give you this warning that says could not find override file, user overrides. Uh, and that's fine because I'm gonna show you how to set that up later. But now that we've installed just default Arkin Fox, right? If we open up Firefox again, as you can see, it's blank. Every single piece of annoying, stupid corporate art and annoying stuff has been stripped from this. And that's fantastic because we can go through and use it like a normal browser. If you go to denshi.org, as you can see, it also has a letterboxing enabled by default. So it's got that security features. It's got a bunch of other stuff. So there's actually a user overrides file that I have in my home directory. This one over here, just, just with all these default options. This comes from Luke Smith, actually. I'll have this link in the description. It's down in .config and then Firefox, larbs.js, this one over here, um, has a bunch of different options, uh, which I guess are good sane defaults. Like, you know, it gets rid of Reddit, which of course, you know, I'm not a big fan of. So uh, you can go through and download this file. I'll have this link in the description, but basically you wanna move that file user overrides to, um, you know, dot Firefox, or dot Mozilla actually, Firefox, and then the default release profile, so 8, R, Y, whatever it is, right? The one that ends in release. Uh, once you've done that, and if you run Arkin Fox uh, updater, right? And then you select profile zero and type Y, as you can see, it says override file appended user overrides.js. So now if you open up Firefox, as you can see, it's got even more things removed, like the pocket functionality is gone. There's a bunch of other stuff that's been customized. And you can also go through here and set stuff like, I don't know, you can go through and um, change the security settings, like add cookies and site data, like you can add extensions, uh, sorry, exceptions, like you could back in Google Chrome. So let's say I wanna add, I don't know, google.com as an extension, uh, as, an, as an exception, right? You can allow google.com cookies and stuff like that. And you can also clear histories at different times. And there's a lot more granular control in Firefox than there is in Chrome. Like you can really go through here and make it your own browser, like really customize a lot of stuff. Um, and you can go through and check out the Arkin Fox. I really do recommend going to the Arkin Fox uh, GitHub page, checking out all the different options you can customize. It's all in the wiki actually. So down here in the wiki, you can go through and decide whether to use it or not. And, and basically all the common overrides and different security features you might or might not want to enable. I won't get too deep into this because this is something I might have to make like a whole video about customizing it. But basically if a website isn't working, you can probably find an option in this wiki and I'll have this link in the description once again, where you can customize different things that make the browser work with a website so if it's not working. But this is, I would say the solution is quite extreme in terms of privacy and security. But if you're out there, you're really looking for the best private option, like all almost Tor browser levels of security for your regular everyday browsing, this isn't a bad option, you know? But anyways, you know, those were all the browsers I had to showcase in today's video. I've been Denshi. I hope you learned something at least educational from this video. Check them all out. They're all in the description, like I said. And yeah, I've been Denshi. This is a video about web browsers. Goodbye.